What is going on guys, Brown here and welcome to part 4 of my mighting career mode Here today for the Chinese Grand Prix But before we get to the Chinese Grand Prix we have got an invitation event It is here um, at Zamfort, that's caused the next round in the championship In the 2010 Red Bull And it's one where we just have to get through as many gates as we can in the time limit and we did end up passing it. Zamfor, a very fun track to drive if. And the Red Bull, just a nice car to drive as well. It sounds amazing as well. I wish the F1 car still sounded like that. But that is the invitation event done. And into the R&D before we go to qualifying for China. We are going to do a big upgrade on the aero. We're also going to do an upgrade on the chassis as well. Because we're not great in either of them. Because we've only had four rounds as a team. So the only team we're better than is Williams. So we're going to do that chassis upgrade. And then we'll get into qualifying for the Chinese Grand Prix. But before we do get into that. We've got a new sponsor and I've decided to go with Quest just because they're offering us quite a bit of money but also it's one of the easier ones. There's one that get you a lot of money but you have to lead four laps in a race. Or there's one you get a lot of money but you can own but you have to do a hundred laps which we're only doing fifty percent races is very, very hard to get. So our first lap in qualifying, it was important to get out there very quick because there's actually rain forecast in in the session, in the qualifying session. So it was important to get out there very quickly. Now we set our lap, we're into QT because everyone else didn't actually get a lap in before the rain came down. So that helped to go through. Grand New Jersey, his home Grand Prix stays in 22nd into now. The second, the second session and you can just see how much spray and how much water there is on the track time for the inters and we round the final corner to set our lap time it's going to be p6 for now but we are going to fall outside the top 10 you can see already we do improve going into the first corner and we'll go again and this is the same lap we have found a lot of time you can see nearly one and a half seconds but we cross the line but we stay P12 we've got one more run in the session towards the end we've found even more time we've found three seconds so that's just saying how slow that first lap was currently sitting in P16 we come up to the line now and we're just outside the top 10 P11 and you know what we look our car looks quick in the wet fortunately it's not going to be raining tomorrow so we'll see what we can do I'm think, thinking that we're probably going to be falling back it'd be great to just hold the position but let's get into it it's time to find out which driver is up to the task of claiming the Chinese Grand Prix. We're here in Shanghai. Shanghai International Circuit then, a 16 corner high speed thrill ride. The long and ever tightening right hander at turns one and two tests a driver's patience and the flat open to the elements location tests their skill in a crosswind. Two DRS zones will assist passing and overtaking is available into turn one and of course down the kilometre long back straight into the hairpin at turn 14. Now, Anthony Davidson, I wonder, might we be in for some early pit stops today from the midfield teams? Or try to put some pressure on or disrupting things for the leaders up front? If you're in the middle of the pack, you know, you've got your own race to run, I don't think they're going to be thinking about causing trouble up front. However, closer to the head of the pack, don't be surprised to see some split strategies. 
If you're running second and third, for example, bringing one car in for an undercut while leaving the other one out there longer can put a lot of pressure on the leader and maybe force them into an error. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The fence starts from pole position. Just edging out Alexander Olbon, who'll start from P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Ocon, Carlos Sainz, and Ricardo, Raikkonen, Perez, Stroll, and Roman Grosjean, Brown, Kvyat, Sebastian Vettel, and Giovinazzi, Magnussen, Leclerc, George Russell, and Lewis Hamilton, Norris, Latifi, Gasly, and Quan Yu Zhou. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. So into the race then, we're going to be doing a one-stop from the mediums onto the hard tyres, not really much point doing a two stop because we I don't think we're going to have the pace but we'll see what we can do, you never know China was a bit of a weird track for me on F1 2019 I know in this series I keep comparing back to last year's game but China was alright it was a bit of a bad track for me but let's go to the race then as it's for five lights and we're away here in China, everyone going for it, it looks like we've got a good start, we've got a side by side now with the two racing points, we're going to go through the middle of the racing points, we're going to try and get round the outside of the other racing point, we're going to sail round the outside, that wouldn't turn to the inside, let's look at the Renault, battling for P2 in the race, just up, just up ahead of us, you can see that is um, Daniel Ricciardo, I think it is, going away with Alex Albon, we have got past both of the racing points and now we're going to send it on the Haas and the other Renault of Daniel Ricciardo so it's Ocon battling for second place and he's still going as Esteban Ocon he looks like he might have even got that position in this race we've got a good start we're up there and the next up is the Alpha but we're into P7 so that is a magnificent start for us into turn 1 but we go wide, Daniel Ricciardo sees his chance, he's on the hard tyre so he looks to be doing the reverse strategy to us in this race. We do defend the Aussie off and we we'll see, we we'll live the fight for another day. As you can see those in front of us very much getting away very quickly, already up to nearly 3 seconds. And here comes the Haas of Royman Grosjean, he got past Daniel Ricciardo somewhere and he's just breezed past us through the tiny S section in this Chinese Grand Prix and it won't be long bef before Daniel Ricciardo has another pop at us I think heading down into the hairpin, you can't quite see him there he is now, you can just see him to the right of your screen we try to do the cutback and we do do the cutback but Ricardo is still there on traction. We're going to try and go round the outside, but we have to live to fight another day. But Ricardo goes wide, and we sneak back up the inside and keep that P8. But there's now there is DRS that will help the Aussie men as we go into turn one. We go wide again. So that was kind of my line, but then it was really costing me in the race. Daniel Ricardo nearly getting a part inside again. We do squeeze him out quite a bit there, probably a little bit on the risky side if this was a real F1 race but now then heading round the long right hander and now on to the back straight and Ricardo's already got us now we're going to sit in Ricardo's slipstream but I think he's going to have the DRS and he is we're going to use our overtake button but that still isn't enough to get anywhere near close to Ricardo. we're going to go wide, we're going to try and sail around his outside at the hairpin and we do make that move stick and that is one hell of a move in this race just just trying to cling on for points, we've got much much faster cars behind us so we just need to do all we can to keep them and there goes, look at that, the Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel just sailed it round our outside but now kind of in a sandwich with Daniel Ricciardo as well, sorry it's Charles Leclerc Charles Leclerc still there on our inside trying to sort of let him through but Charles Leclerc gets me move done, we're nowhere near the Ferrari we're going to go for it again though because it was very slow but we go wide and he looks like he might have a cut back but 
he doesn't and he sits behind us but now it's only going to be a matter of time and Daniel Ricciardo's actually um, got us here Leclerc overtook us further up the road I'm not sure where that happened but Ricciardo looks to have this time got us for good and that puts us right on the brink of the points in P10 so the race was to end now we get one solid point and you know what how much we've struggled so far this season I'd take that but one lap but you can see how much time Ricardo's gained and this is Pierre Gasly this Daniel Kvyat rather just blitzing past us in the Alfa Tauri the Alfa Tauri is kind of just at the road from us in the R&D so it's kind of a bit frustrating to see him in front of us but he makes a little mistake and we try to capitalise round the outside that doesn't work and now here comes the other Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel they got both got caught out in the wet qualifying I don't think either of them set a time and if they did it was after the rain came down and it was too wet but look at this the racing point down our inside we try and defend to the outside we've lost out to Sebastian Vettel and I think that was Lance Stroll and we keep the Canadian behind in this race but now we are out of the points here comes Lance Stroll that Mercedes engine carrying the BTEC Mercedes and he has passed and now here comes the other half of Kevin Magnussen there's a Mercedes behind us as well I think that has pitted and now is the pit, obviously the pit stop in front of us we do defend the racing point and the Haas and I can't believe we're only 8 laps into this race would you believe we go wide I was too busy checking um, all the other stuff on my MFD and we just drove off the track and Stroll is through as we go right up the inside bang wheels with Lance Stroll very risky move but it paid off and we do keep that P11 in a way but the cars have started to make their stop they're going to come back through behind us so that P9 very much deceiving I think it is around P10 around P11 or P12 now though Stroll gonna come at us again and oh he makes a mistake Stroll's in the wall Stroll's gone wide what's happened there he's now off the track he's lost his front wing and oh no don't reverse there Stroll but Stroll has lost his front wing or at least half of his front wing and he looks to he maybe hit the back of us I'm not sure but Stroll's race he's just gone from okay to bad and he lost it all on his own what Lance Stroll nowhere near I don't know whether the weight from our card but he just he just lost it look at that and that's that's a big crash he just he just seemed to have a little bit of oversteer or maybe try to correct it but he corrected it too much and he's in the wall and now here comes Kevin Magnussen after witnessing um, so um, Lance Stroll now gets past us and so does the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton if you're wondering why the Mercedes is still so what this was filmed pretty much the day after the game came out so a couple of weeks ago now so I think it's around um, Japan I've pre-recorded that many episodes we're in, um, I've recorded up to Japan as we lose another two positions there in this race so by the time we get to Japan it will be the black Mercedes so we're kind of going backwards as pretty much expected in this race we were massively outperforming the car but we have got one back and we could get the other off of Lando Norris and we do and now Kimi Raikkonen's gonna have another look at Lando here Lando has the inside line he's gonna look to squeeze him out and he does but Kimi's keeping his nose in there he's just his front wing's just about level but we've gone wide and look at this train behind us here comes Kimi he just about actually it's Antonio Giovinazzi got managed to get past Lando somewhere and now look at this the two McLaren boys 
Lando has got passes, now we're fending off. And the other McLaren of Carlos Sainz, we've gone wide. And this is going to be the, the lap then, where we probably lose some more positions. We've got Lando and Sainz just at the road from us. We're probably not going to be able to get up to the back of them. And down our inside comes Lando Norris. And we've actually gone massively wide. We've lost that to Ocon and Charles Leclerc. And that wasn't the smartest thing to do. We did it earlier in the Grand Prix. We put a wheel on the grass. We've done it again there and we've lost two or three positions. And now we've got our teammate behind us. Is the yellow flags. They now go green. So nothing looking too much. It was only briefly yellow flags. As here comes Guan Yu Zhou. And Guan Yu Zhou now. He's overtaking us. As he kind of making progress in this Chinese Grand Prix. His home Grand Prix. Don't forget. But this is why there was yellow flags. And it's because George Russell has retired. He's had an engine issue. He's going slowly. And George Russell does retire from the Chinese Grand Prix into the pits we come now to make our one and only stop onto the hard compound tyres as we trundle down the pit lane you can see that new sponsor quest on the side of our car it's a bit hard to see when the car's at high speed but at slow speeds like this it is you, you can very much see it on lap 14 so slap bang in the middle of the race we have a little bit of a moment getting away there but we're going to come out of the pits and we've actually lost out to pretty much everyone in this race which is a bit of a shame because I feel like though we were probably going to lose that eventually we could have gone down very much fighting but we have lost out to pretty much everyone we're just behind though our teammate and there's a safety car deployed and I'm not sure why that is we're going to have to go slowly here and that is because Pierre Gasly has lost his front wing completely there and I don't know what's happened to the Alpha Tauri as he gets into the back of the Williams and he's done the copy and paste of Lance Stroll that time was a much bigger hit he was carrying on quite a lot more speed he was a lot closer to the car in front and he's pretty much just spinning down the track this is a replay because he just lost it and that see his front wing go flying up and into the air as he hit the barrier and that is a big big crash I think some of these crashes I have the damage on reduced I think it was if it was any higher it would it'd be out of the race and I think Lance Stroll would be out as well but we're on the back now of Nicholas Latifi we're ahead of Pierre Gasly now who's pitted so he hasn't really lost out too much because of the safety car being deployed because of the debris so it, it'll be on fresh tyres so in theory he can still get back into this race but he's going to have to get through us quick and get through the cars in front of us quick if he does indeed overtake us and it looks like he might be doing that fairly quickly down the inside he's on the medium compound tyres as we try and hold our line round the outside but Pierre Gasly even though we tried to squeeze him he's not giving up we tried to force him a little bit wide he's now going to look back up the inside but he can't do anything about that and we do keep a lonely P19 in this race as we go round the back straight there's yellow flags again on lap 20 here and that is because there's a massive engine failure and it's Guan Yu Zhou our teammate his engine's blown, his Honda engine's blown and that is massively disappointment for the team and the reliability you've got to ask of our car is, a, is just let go on the straight and I didn't actually see him so I actually nearly hit one here I, really, I didn't see it till the last second but that's massively disappointment really showing that we need to put some development into the into the durability side of the department it's actually a really kind of late safety car 
Still 8 laps to go, we're in to P15 after people did make another stop. So, everyone bunching up again. We've got quite a few cars behind us, but we are on slightly older tyres now. So it's going to be hard to keep them behind us. We're on the back of Nicholas Satifi, the last remaining Williams in this race. Of course, George Russell retired earlier on in the Grand Prix. And now, if we can hold on, great. But I think it's going to be very hard to. Here comes Pete Gasly now on the back of us, goes to the inside. We try to defend around the outside, but Pierre Gasly puts his nose in front just there and he's going to try and squeeze us out we are going to try and keep our nose in there and we do and round the outside we defend Pierre Gasly and Sergio Perez I think that is has got past the Alfa Tauri and it is in fact Lance Stroll in, in the racing point not Sergio Perez Lance Stroll of course fighting back from that earlier incident in this race as here comes Lance Stroll past us now pretty much going to be hard to keep that racing point behind us and I've just seen that we have both Ferraris behind us as well so they're making or at least one Ferrari behind us so they made it an extra stop I believe that is Charles Leclerc but Lance Stroll gets a move done on us and it's four wide minute nearly there in the background it's definitely three wide going into turn one and it looks like, I can't quite see, it looks like Ricardo, I think it is the Renault, just in front of the McLaren. The McLaren keeps the position, we're going to lose out now to Carlos Sainz, we've lost out to someone up in front I think. And Lance Stroll has us down our inside, we are going to defend to the outside, try and serve around the outside but we've gone wide. And that allows Lance Stroll and um, Carlos Sainz to go through and up into that position ahead of us now. And now we're going to be left defending the Renault that I believe is Daniel Ricciardo. Ricciardo just tucking into our slipstream ready and poised to get out of it when he can. It is actually Esteban Ocon, sorry, I'm, I'm rubbish with these names. When it comes to action like this, was, but we do get overtaken by Esteban Ocon there and we do have Charles Leclerc behind us and it's only going to be a matter of time before that Ferrari in a different league compared to our car that Ferrari is an F1 car this the car we have compared to that Ferrari in its current state is pretty much an F2 car but when we're not going to go down without a fight here we are going to try and re-overtake the Ferrari. We're just going to sit there in his slipstream. But in the end, there's not really too much fighting. Too, um, not much point fighting fighting him. And he is going to go up. But the thing that I was keeping the eye on, that Nicholas Latifi was just about staying in front. Because, of course, he was just in front of us. But we were so busy trying to defend those behind us that he's actually got away and you can see him just up the road as Pete, as Pete Gasly overtakes us there and we're in last place so two laps to go it's still possible to get Nicholas Latifi in this race a poor race it's been because we had a great qualifying but we have, li we have literally dropped like a stone in this race especially around the pit stops we lost what about four or five positions so not great at all as here comes Pierre Gasly Nicholas Latifi trying to go defensive locks up and Pierre Gasly is going to get that move done around the outside Nicholas Latifi tried to defend to the outside but the Frenchman of Pierre Gasly does come out on top ahead of the Canadian so then we will have now one lap to try and catch and pass Nicholas Latifi it's going to be hard, hard, but it's no way indeed impossible. You can see the gap there. One second. Can we get it down as we enter sector two through the S section? We are literally pushing with all we've got. 1.2 now. We're off a couple of attempts, but it is going to be a win then for Valtteri Bottas. 
he's driven an amazing race and he wins here in China followed by the Red Bull of Axe Albon then the Ferrari Sebastian Vettel then the other Red Bull and Lewis Hamilton everyone flooding through now to finish the race you can see there's the Alfa Tari and there's everyone pretty much in front of us but the main question is have we done enough and the answer is we haven't okay pick up rubber and bring it home there'll be many smiles at the factory after that one a great race and a real team performance to take the win here in shanghai Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Without a doubt, the safety car changed everything today. The key to their success was keeping calm and reacting to the situation quickly. We've seen teams in the past throw away wins because they were too hesitant, but here they were decisive and that's allowed them to take the advantage. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team and they certainly deserve it. Quick look at how the driver's standings have changed. Lewis Hamilton takes over the lead of the Drivers' Championship after an excellent result. After an incredible day of racing, who was your driver of the day, Ant? It's got to be Lewis Hamilton. I mean, he pulled off some impressive feats out on the track today, even by his standards. Let's move on to the constructors. Mercedes moved to the top of the table. Well, Ant, an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. So a slightly annoying race, I think it had good potential, if the car was maybe a little bit better I think we could have maybe even snatched a point, but as it stands we literally dropped like a stone, so not great. You can see the driver standing there, Lewis Hamilton, top just ahead of Charles Leclerc, Albon and then Valtteri Bottas, that win today definitely helping him. Us and Williams are the only two teams still yet to score. We are only two points behind Haas, but that two points to Haas at this current moment in time literally feels like cl climbing Everest because the car is nowhere near competitive. The only car we can safely say we can beat is the Williams, which is very poor on our standards. I mean, we're a new team, so... It's not it's not to be expected. We're not going to be getting points every weekend. We do get both um, bonuses though from the sponsors. We've now got a budget of £5.3 million. Pounds. I'm sure an actual F1 team would have way more than that. We're going to do the activities for the team to do. We can You can see as well that we have a press conference. Another one with Will Buxton to do. And so we're going to do these activities. And then we'll do the press conference at the start of the next episode at the Dutch Grand Prix, I believe it is. I know this is the Spanish Grand Prix. Yes, I think that is right. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure to like and subscribe for more. And I will see you the next episode at the Dutch Grand Prix.